All right, here we go. Um, an ellipse. Remember, an ellipse is an elongated circle, okay? It's like an oval. If you can remember back to maybe kindergarten, um, you would identify shapes as ovals or circles. Well, um, the fancy mathematical term is an ellipse. And we have, this is going to make a lot of sense here, is you have something called the major axis and a minor axis. Well, the major axis is the longer length. And then the minor axis would be the shorter length. All right, so an ellipse is the set of all points in a coordinate plane such that for each point of the set, the sum of its distances from two fixed points is constant. Each of the fixed points is called a focus. And if you remember how we talked about the elliptical room, um, that you could sit at one point and then overhear a whispering conversation in that other point. Those are the focal points. The standard form of an ellipse with center. Today we're going to start at 0, 0, then tomorrow we'll move it off the origin. You have major and minor axes that are lengths 2a and 2b. The problem here, or something to really point out, is a is always the bigger number. So if you look here, it's x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Since a is underneath the x, that means the major axis is horizontal. And from your center to the edge is a distance of a. So then the entire major axis is a length of 2a. And then if the a is underneath the y, like in the second one, x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals 1, this means it's a vertical major axis, and so it's still a and a. So what's different is a is always the bigger number. When we get to the hyperbola, a is always going to be in the first position, and it's not necessarily bigger. And so the good news is when we do our open note quest next week, um, you know, you can write all sorts of notes all over this. All right, the vertices. You have vertices and you have co-vertices. Vertices are on the major axis. The co-vertices are on the minor axis. So it will vary from problem to problem. So the vertices lie on the major axis, A units from the center. The co-vertices lie on the minor axis, B units from the center. The foci, and remember a focus is singular. If you have more than one focus, they're referred to as foci. And you find them, they're on the major axis, C units from the center. They're not from the vertices like the parabola but it's C units from the center. Now, you guys, don't get this confused with Pythagorean theorem. It's C, C squared equals A squared minus B squared. So let's look at these. Example one says, write an equation in standard form of an ellipse whose center is at the origin, vertex is 5 comma 0, and has a co-vertex of 0, negative 3. Well, let's make a rough sketch here. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. If this is a vertex and the center is at the origin, I know the other vertex is at negative 5 comma 0. And because it's identified as a vertex, that's telling me about the major axis. And then if I have a co-vertex at negative 3, then there's another co-vertex up at 3. And please make sure you're labeling it V and Cov. So then A is the distance from the center to the vertex, so it's 5, and B is the distance from the center to the co-vertex. So then because the major axis is horizontal, it's going left and right, those are x's, right? 
So I'm going to need to know that that's the x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. So this is x squared over 25 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. Now we were not asked to find the foci, but let's go ahead and do it just for practice because we're going to need to do it. To find the foci, we need c squared equals a squared minus b squared. That's 25 minus 9. And be careful when you're solving this equation, c is plus or minus 4. Now the foci are on the major axis. So the coordinates then would be plus or minus 4 comma 0. Does that make sense? All right, let's try another one. In example 2, it says write an equation in standard form of an ellipse whose center is at the origin, the vertex is 0, negative 10, and a co-vertex at 6 comma 0. So again, this is just a rough sketch to get an idea of what's going on. So let's call this negative 10, that's a vertex. It has a, a partner up here at positive 10. I have a co-vertex at 6. And then that means at negative 6 is another co-vertex. So this is an ellipse. Alright, anybody want to try it? What would letter A be? And what is B? Six. Because the major axis is vertical and Y is stretching up and down, this is going to be um, X squared over B squared plus Y squared over A squared equals one. Remember, A is always the bigger number and it goes underneath the variable. that would give that major axis. So this is x squared over 36 plus y squared over 100 equals 1. Even though I'm not asked, let's go ahead and practice finding the foci. So I get c squared equals 100 minus 36. c is plus or minus 8. The foci is located on the major axis. So it's here and here. Remember, it's on the major axis. C units from the center. So the coordinates of my foci are going to be 0, comma, plus or minus 8. Okay? Does this make sense? This isn't too bad. All right, now we're going to move to equations in example 3. It says graph the equation 16x squared plus 9y squared equals 144. Well, let me go back a screen or two. The standard form, they ha it has to have an equation that equals 1. So what do I need to do in example 3 in order to make this equal 1? How do I get it to equal 1? Divide by 144. You can subtract 43, too. Yeah, 144. Ah, funny. Yeah, that, that still doesn't put it in the form. So I get x squared over 9 plus y squared over 16 equals 1. I will tell you in about 99% of the cases, this will happen where these two numbers just switch. Um, if it, it occasionally doesn't, but the majority of the time it does. So the center is obviously at 0, 0. What is A? A is not 16. It's 9. Four. It's 4. Because you were in the right location, but it's A squared is underneath Y squared. So A is the square root. So then B is 3. All right, now, because A is underneath Y, that means I have a vertical major axis. 
So my vertices are going to be 0, comma, plus or minus 4. So I'm up 4, call it V. Down 4, call it V. The co-vertices are B units away. So this is co-V, co-V. So that would be plus or minus 3 comma 0. And now I need the foci. C squared equals A squared minus B squared. So that's 16 minus 9. So C is plus or minus the square root of 7. And, and I want to encourage you not to get dependent on your calculator. The square root of 7 is in between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. I don't have to be perfect here. I know that's a number between 2 and 3, and it's closer to the 3, right? So it's on the major axis, and it's really close to 3. So to identify it, the foci then is going to be 0 plus or minus the square root of 7. Let's double check our work. We graphed it. We graphed the vertices, the co-vertices, the foci, and then we've identified them in our work. Okay? Any questions? All right, last one. Graph the equation 9x squared plus y squared equals 9. We're trying to get this in standard form, so we'll divide by 9. If it helps, you might want to put x squared over 1 so you can see what a and what b are. Remember, A is always the larger number. So what would A be here? 3. B is 1. This is a vertical major axis. So I'm going to go up 3, down 3. So my vertices are 0, plus or minus 3. The co-vertices are at 1 and negative 1. This is kind of a skinny little ellipse. Last thing we want to do is find the foci, and you do that by c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Remember, we simplify all radicals, so this would be 2 square root 2. Now, I do want to think about square root 8. That's easier to think about without a calculator. That's really close to 3, isn't it? Square root 8. So, and it's on the major axis. So it's here and here. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's 0 plus or minus 2 radical 2.